Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Pinot Flat food and wine show, yeah When you wanna have a good time Drink a little wine It's almost Christmas time. We've got celebrations, parties, all kinds of events coming up. And after that, we've got New Year's. What better wine to serve than champagne? So come on in. Let's have another episode of that Food and Wine Show. When filming a show on champagne, it's obvious that fun naturally follows. We decided that champagne is about celebration, so celebrate we did. We prepared for today's show by researching all things champagne and the many books that comprise Chris's extensive library on the subject. In keeping with the holiday spirit, we began today's show with a very important question. How does one go about opening a bottle of champagne? We seek to answer this and other questions on this holiday edition of That Food and Wine Show. You want to open it gently. Tear off the foil on, with your thumb on top of the cork. Twist the metal rim, the, the metal wire. Gently remove the metal wire. Keep your thumb on uh, on the cork at all times. Put your hand on top. Slowly twist and turn while pushing pressure down on the cork. And let a slow hiss out of the bottle. And voila. It is a sparkling wine, but specifically it's from the region in France named Champagne. It's a sparkling wine that's fermented in bottle, at least a secondary fermentation in bottle and anything else outside of the Champagne region is just sparkling wine. It could be French, it could be from the Loire Valley, it could be from Alsace. If it's not from Champagne, it's just not it's Champagne. It's mostly just you know, rolling hills, and the ground crew are mostly on the, uh, the slopes of those hills, Premier crew, and then you have everything else kind of in between. Ground crew are the best, they fetch the highest prices for the growers, the fruit's the highest quality. Premier crew is the next step down, but all of those are based on the commune of the town that they grow around. So people would argue that, well, it's not necessarily uh, vin vineyard selection, it's really more of a regional thing, but it's still a really great guy. And of all French export, uh, of all Champagne exports are the 10 biggest houses. Uh, but there are, as I said, there are many other great houses out there, but they have their own little niche markets. You know, you might find them in LA, you might find them in New York, you might find them in Tampa, but you might not find them in Idaho. Cities around the country, you might not find the widest selection of champagne, but that's why those houses are so successful. You know, they've, they've really uh, caught the market, and they've really got the advertising dollars to back them up. They've got good quality to back them up as well, but I would argue there's greater quality if you can find them. And they have three grapes, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Meunier. Chardonnay and Pinot Noir are generally regarded as the best. Uh, light wines are going to be made with more Chardonnay, fuller body wines can be made with more Pinot Noir. Unfortunately, though, most of the major brands use Pinot Meunier as the main workhorse, as the main body of a lot of champagnes that are produced. It's not from any Premier Crew or Grand Crew vineyards. It's just kind of the uh, the bulk wine of the region. It's more uh, landlocked, so it's not really a maritime thing. It's really more, it's uh, you know, north of Paris but by about an hour. It's chalky soils, uh, very cold up there. Uh, it's really hard for these grapes to grow, which uh, is kind of why Champagne came to be in the first place. They would ferment the wine, which was usually a, a, a still light pinkish kind of dark rosé looking thing, made from Pinot Noir mostly. They'd ferment the wine, let it sit over the cold winters after it was done fermenting. Uh, in the spring, as it got warmer, it would re-ferment. The yeast wasn't done, it would re-ferment, break bottles, you know, create bubbles in the wine, and they didn't like bubbles. Bubbles were a bad thing. The British really developed a stronger bottle, and it became fashionable for the bubbles because it was such a unique little thing that they were actually that they actually desired. They actually wanted to preserve the bubbles. This is a bad glass. I got bubbles coming up all over the place. Okay. This is a poor glass. This is just glass. If I had a crystal, like a Riedel crystal, they actually drill little holes in the bottom of it. It's so sheer on the inside. It's so perfect on the inside. They put little imperfections on it so that the stream will come up straight from the center. The imperfections arise, the bubbles arise where there are imperfections in the glass. Vintage champagnes are quite rare. There's really only three or four times a decade where a vintage wine is made. Um, that is, you know, champagne from a single year. 
most champagnes are planned in multiple years. Um, the body of the wine is, it can be easily determined just by the style, you know, Blanc de Noir, Blanc de Blanc, or, or the Rosé. Um, but it's also uh, some, some cellar management as well. Some champagnes can be, uh, the still wine can go through malolactic fermentation, like, you know, like Chardonnay, you know, that's where you get those buttery, kind of creamy qualities to it. You can have that in your still wine first before it goes through the secondary fermentation. That's going to give you a lot of additional body. But more, more often, you see the, when, in that riddling process, when the champagne's aging, it's sitting on the lees, it's sitting on the yeast. That adds structure, that adds that doughy, bready quality. And the longer it's aged in that process really determines uh, the additional body and additional yeasty, doughy quality. ...that just springs into place and snaps on the bottom of the rim. We've got a twisty type little golf ball here that come in many different styles. But never, ever put a cork back in a bottle of champagne. That too will scare the hell out of your cat. Provides you with a little more information on picking out a champagne for this holiday season. Have a happy Ramahana Kwanzmas, and we'll toast you at New Year's. That's all for that Food and Wine Show. See you next time.